are there other ways that we can train our subconscious to be in alignment with our conscious mind? Okay, very good question. Um, remember, when we wake up in the morning, we are in that alpha state. And interesting enough, we have to go into that alpha state before we go to sleep, otherwise we will not be able to go to sleep. So there are two windows of opportunity right there to put in that subconscious mind what we want in life. In, in, in every aspect, you know, uh, first thing, you know, is relationships, health, financial matters, okay? Our purpose for life, our career, what we're going to do for a living, okay? And then very important, the spiritual part. You know, we, we, we are body, mind, and spirit. And sometimes we're trying to neglect that. When I was a teenager, I didn't, I don't want, didn't want to deal with anything dealing with the spiritual matters uh, <laughs> until I got in trouble. And then somebody introduced me to that. And then since then, I understand the power of that. So uh, I went to all kinds of stuff. You know, I practiced yoga. I studied Buddhism. I studied all kinds of stuff. And then come to the realization that the spiritual aspect of who we are is extremely important. And we need to put it together because it goes beyond, you know, our, our nature. Uh, and then we, when we put that together in, in writing, for instance, uh, uh, in my script, in my own personal audios, I put in a daily basis, okay, I am grateful for what God is doing in my life. Every single day, I, I sort of uh, pay attention to what, what I'm receiving in my life and acknowledge that there is a God and that God is providing me for these things that are happening. And then I go on and put more things, you know, put more things. Uh, I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful, for, you know, gratitude is part of that spiritual mentality. Uh, when we are not grateful, we take for granted what we have. And that's a huge problem. Okay? Because when we take for granted for, for what we have, sometimes we don't take care of that. Relationships, uh, economical things, we, we, don't, we don't take care. When we, t when we acknowledge that, that, that it, it, there is something beyond our will and desire and effort that is, you know, providing that to us, then we are more uh, grateful and we take care of business. So, see, more. so uh, you wake up in the morning and then you, ahead of time, you write down, okay, who you want to be in this world, in all those categories, okay, that, uh, that you would be smart in the use of money and you put it in the present tense. You avoid putting negative language. You use metaphors. Let me give you one. There is a person that just sent me one. He's a motivational speaker. Okay? And he sent one uh, in regard to the finances. He said, money flowed to me like water. And even when I am sleeping, my finances are increasing. I remember that's that phrase because I thought it was so unique. He used a metaphor, water, you know? Because, you know, water flows, <laughs> we often deposit, it just yeah. flows, right? <laughs> and it's, it flows, money will flows to me like that. And he, he does really well. Okay, economic That's a great one. Way. You know, then an athlete, uh, a metaphor, uh, talking about being fast, explosive, timing, concentration, okay? So I am a hungry cheetah getting to every ball. That's a tennis play. That's a metaphor. I have been used a lot in martial arts. Martial arts, they use metaphorical things for the different kinds of martial arts, arts, arts that, that exist. So metaphors triggers left, right part of the brain, and the emotional part of the brain. And consequently, the impact on us is more holistic versus when it's a, without metaphor, it's pretty much left part of the brain. Okay, so that's another aspect. So they uh, will repeat present tense, uh, only positive language, and they use the metaphors. 
So you write it down in all the categories, and then as soon as you wake up, you read that. And the brain immediately produces video clips of you actually being that person. And because you were in the alpha, that information is not just in the, con in the conscious mind, it's immediately in the subconscious mind. And then like the song that you hear that you end up repeating during the day, without wanting to repeat it, you start acting based on that that was stored subconsciously in the morning. And then you finish the day, and then you, you take, a, which is a good idea, you write down the things that you're grateful for that day. Or in your mind, you say, I'm so grateful for this, and for this, and for this, and for this, and for that. So then you go into that spiritual aspect, and you say grateful, you know, I am Christian, so I say, thank you, God, you know. Uh, and, and that's good enough, you know, grateful for all these things, you know. And then you read again before going to sleep, when you are ready to turn off the light, when, you know, when you're ready to just put the head on the, on the pillow, you read again. You know, you describe of who you want to be in all those categories. And then because it was the last thing you read and you are already, already in that sort of alpha state because you're tired, you know, all the stuff, you're ready to go to sleep, it goes again into that subconscious mind. And then you, you reinforce it again. Did it in the morning and then a night before going to sleep, but here is something else. Every time, you find yourself during the day doing something that is in agreement with what you have written. Okay? You again say thank you. If you are, as you know, uh, you use the spiritual aspect, you say, thank you, you know, and you know, you acknowledge that there is something bigger than yourself allowing you to accomplish that. And thank you because you did it because you have the will to do it, because you have the discipline to do it. And, and this is what is called in psychology, you reinforce it. The, right. the law here is like a law in psychology. Those things that are reinforced, repeat and multiply. It creates momentum. It is so, it's almost like the exponential power that it created in, 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 in us. Instead of, instead of ignoring some people sometimes and this unfortunately many people they wait until they accomplish what they want to accomplish to be grateful and to be happy no you was what i call you celebrate the little victories and even though you're not there yet let's say it in the losing way somebody offered you a piece of cake Okay, and you like eating cake, but you know that's not the thing to eat. You want to lose those, you know, be in great shape. You say, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. You know, uh, I, I love I love your gesture of offering me cake. You know, I am in a, in a process of getting in great shape. Um, obviously, you know, I cannot eat now at this point cake, you know, but I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And then after all, you say, I did the right thing. And then you go, yes. That's a little reinforcement. You're reinforcing the little victories. That is no big thing in relationship to the big goal that you have. Okay. But that is important. And you celebrate it before in the, in the, in the journey. Okay. So celebrating the little victories in the journey before you actually get there reinforces and it creates an impact in the brain emotionally. And then the chances of that being multiplied and reproduced increases dramatically versus waiting until you accomplish it. Okay. So now you create a simulated process where early in the morning when you are in that alpha, then during the day. Okay. And then uh, 